DDP with Mrs. Fletcher. Today, I'm going to show you how to lay out the parts for your hallway glider to look like this. We're going to follow the set of plans that are linked below or in your Google Classroom. So the first step is to get out those plans and get your materials. If you do not have this sheet of cardstock, don't worry. You can use anything like an old folder or a cereal box or some other food box. It just has to be some thick, sturdy cardstock. Even the regular cardstock that you use for uh, stationery or crafting will work just fine. So if you have all of your materials, let's get started. The materials you need to lay out your hallway glider include the plans, your cardstock, a ruler, and a pencil. Once you have your materials, we want to take our plans and lay out all of the parts on our cardstock to look like this. But how do we get there? And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. You're going to use a pencil to do this, but I'm going to use a Sharpie just so it's easy to see on camera. You're going to need your ruler and your pencil. And if we take a look at these plans, all of the dimensions are laid out. A dimension is just a number that represents the size or measurement of each part. Part of the dimension is the extension line, the leader, and the actual number. On our plans, these numbers are represented in inches. They have this arrow, which is called a leader, that extends to these extension lines. These extension lines extend all the way to the part of the shape that we are dimensioning. So this four inches extends to the top line and the bottom line of this main body panel of our hallway glider. So from here to here equals four inches. That being said, if we take a look at this three, this points up to these two lines and they extend to the dashed lines or the dotted lines. And this distance will be three inches. On the other side, we have a half inch that shows from here, this top line, to the next top line. And that is the same on both sides, but we don't have to duplicate that. So if there is a duplicate dimension, um, as far as on the left and the right, you only have to put it in once. So we assume that this goes all the way through and this distance is exactly the same. So this is also half an inch. Now, let's take this information and transfer it to our cardstock material. Using my ruler, I'm going to place the zero line in line with the top edge of my paper. And I'm going to measure down to the first line. I'm going to assume that this is straight and we're going to use the edge of our paper for this top line. So we're going to measure down what we already figured out is a half an inch. We're going to measure down to this dashed line. So I'm gonna put a dash at the half inch mark. And I'm just gonna keep going for each line. The next line is three inches from my half inch. So from the top, we would need to add in three plus a half. So that's three and a half. So I find three and a half on my ruler and I'm going to put a dash. The last dimension we need to include for our main body panel is the overall, which is four. So from this top edge or the edge of the paper, we're gonna go down four. I'm just going to darken those lines up with my Sharpie so they are easier to see on camera. And I did that on the right side of my cardstock. I'm going to move my ruler over to the left side and you should repeat this, half, three and a half, four. Because these lines are all parallel, if we only do it on one side, we won't know exactly where to line our ruler. Now this is an exaggerated example, but we wanna make sure that we have a mark on both sides so that our lines are truly parallel. 
line up your ruler so that it meets both marks that you've created for the four inch distance. Then take your writing utensil, which should be a pencil, and draw a line that goes from the edge to edge. Do not go from dot to dot. We want the entire edge. Try not to move your ruler because then your line will not be straight. So now I have a line that's four inches from the top of your paper. Let's go to the next set of dashes. This time, we have to be a little bit more careful because according to our plans, some of the line is solid and some of the lines are dotted or dashed. So we need to measure that. So I'm going to make sure that my zero line is at the edge of the paper, not the edge of the ruler, the zero line. The total distance should be 11. My cardstock is 11 inches. I know that the total distance is 11 because of these dimensions right here. The total length of my main body panel is 11 inches. Now let's take a closer look at this line. The first line up from the bottom is solid for three inches and dash the rest of the way. So take your writing utensil, your pencil, and we're going to do a solid line up to the three inch mark. And I'm even gonna put a little dash there. And then the rest of the way should be a dashed or a dotted line. The size of the dashes don't really matter. We need to know if it's a solid line or a dash line for the assembly of the hallway glider because the dash lines is where we are going to fold and the solid lines are where we are going to cut. I'm going to need to repeat these steps because we have another line that is also solid and then dashed. We're missing one line and that's this vertical dash line right here. And it should be three inches and three inches from the left. I'm going to take my ruler and just double check it's three inches long and it's three inches apart. So let's line up the ruler and put in our dashed line. So when we cut this out, we're going to cut along the solid lines and we will fold on the dashed lines. The next step is to create the fins. Here's my fin and my air scoop and they're all going to lay out on the bottom. The fins are three inches tall and so is the air scoop. To make this easy for us, I'm going to measure a line three inches from the bottom, just like we did four inches down. I put a mark at the three and a mark at the three. Now I'm going to make a line edge to edge. According to my plan, since the height is three for both of these parts, they should neatly fit along this bottom column or row. Next, you should create a three inch square in either corner because According to these plans, the fins are three inches in length. I'm, I bring my ruler up. You should have the zero on the edge of the paper and mark where the three is because we want to go three inches from the left edge of the paper. We also want to go three inches in from the right side of the paper. We have 11 inches, so 11 minus three is eight. One, two, three. Here's the eight. Put a little line at the eight. Repeat that step on the bottom. Now connect the dots. Now,
Now I have two three inch squares on either corner and I'm going to fit this fin into each corner. If you take a look at the plans, we have a half inch in from the top corner and a half inch up from the lower right corner. Here's the top left corner, here's the lower right corner. Let's measure in one half, and that will be mirrored on the other side. So here's our 11 minus one half is 10 and a half. So at 10 and a half, put a mark. Next, let's measure up from the corner, a half an inch, and repeat on our other square. Now that we have these dots in position, all we have to do is connect the dots. And there we have it, our two fins. This triangle will be cut away and that is scrap. Next, we will complete our layout with the air scoop. The air scoop is the trickiest piece to lay out because of these angled lines. We're going to start with a three inch by three inch square for this center piece right here. I want to center it on my paper. Line your ruler up so that you have the zero line on the right edge of the left fin and the five line on the left edge of the right fin. In order to center this, and we have a three inch square, we are going to measure in from each side one inch. So put a mark at the one and a mark at the four. We went in one inch, we went in one inch. Do the same thing up top. Measure in one inch, measure in one inch at the one and the four. Now we're going to connect those dots using a dashed line. Now that we have our three by three square, we are ready to measure out an eighth of an inch on the tops and measure out three eighths of an inch on the bottoms. I like to line my ruler up so that I am one eighth off of this line. So this dash should be at the one eighth mark. Then I can put a mark at the zero. I'll use my marker. And over here, I'm at three and an eighth. I wanna move out one more, so that would put me at three and a quarter. Then I'm going to do the same method on the bottom, but this time I'm going to offset by three eighths. So if I count out from the inside, I can count one, two, three eighths, and that will put me at the zero mark. And over here, I'm at the three and three eighths. I can count out one, two, three eighths, and that would put me at three and three quarters. But if I count the individual eighths, these two lines are three eighths apart, which matches three eighths apart on our plans. Now that I have each of those, I will connect the dots to create my diagonal line. Now I have my air scoop, my two fins, and my main body panel. In order to make this easier for me when I start to assemble, let's scribble out where the scrap pieces are because sometimes what I find is when people cut out the parts, they accidentally keep the scrap pieces and throw away the actual parts we need to keep. So in order to avoid that, I like to scribble on the scrap areas so I know if it's scribbled on, it has to be tossed or put aside because it is scrap material. 
Now that you have your parts laid out just like mine, we can move on to the next video where I will show you how to assemble all of these parts into your hallway glider. <laughs>